What's up future respiratory therapists? Hey, in this video, we're gonna be talking about a detail of mechanical ventilation that I feel is oftentimes overlooked. The topic is filtration. We're talking about filters. Let's dive in. Alrighty, so as I was saying, this video is all about filtration. And what I want to talk to you about is just give you some insight into some of the different type of elements that relate to filtration that I'll be honest with you, I didn't think about for the longest time. I just grabbed a filter, put it on the vent and said, oh, there's a filter there. Perfect. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. But I think we need to dive a little further into this and I'll tell you why. We all know this filter right here. This is a common bacteria filter. And you may have seen one of these filters. This is a Paul filter. And... While these are both filters, they are not the same. Uh, this filter is an electrostatic filter, while the Paul filter is an hydrophobic filter. Now, what do those words mean? Well, electrostatic is basically an overlaying of a, of a bunch of fibers that work to capture any pathogens as they come through. Where a hydrophobic actually repels any moisture that comes back through it. So, in short, the electrostatic filter runs the risk of becoming saturated and allowing for liquid-borne pathogens and moisture to eventually pass through it, where the hydrophobic filter does not. And so I think it's interesting as I go further into this to just what are we talking about? And what we're talking about is this, this, this age-old thought that, well, a filter is a filter, uh, we now know that not all filters are created equally. So uh, let's talk about why filtration is important. When we look at this, this diagram we have here, uh, we see that we have a ventilator here and there is gas flowing to our patient. Now the inspiratory valve is right here. We know that's typically further back here in the ventilator on our vents these days. But nonetheless, gas comes through, it goes through a humidifier, picks up moisture and is delivered to the patient. Now, that makes perfect sense. We all know how that works. That is why it is extremely important that you have an effective, effective filtration device on your inspiratory limb of your ventilator, which I'm using here. So this is my ventilator and I've got a filter on the inspiratory limb of it. Why? Because I want to protect the patient. Whatever is coming through this vent, I do not want it to be contaminated. I don't want it to be dirty. I don't want it to have particulate matter in there. And so my filter here is going to ensure that nothing gets to my patient. Now you may ask yourself, well, why do you have a hydrophobic filter on your inspiratory limb? Why couldn't you just use an electrostatic filter there? Well, when I think about this, I understand that during the inspiratory phase of the breath, the expiratory valve is closed, which means when the patient coughs or we see these patients who are asynchronous with the ventilator, we oftentimes refer to that as bucking the vent, then there is a large amount of pressure coming back in to the inspiratory limb. This is all humidified. And what if moisture made its way back to the ventilator here? I don't want that moisture to get through my electrostatic filter and back into the inspiratory side of my ventilator. So I'm going to utilize a hydrophobic filter on the inspiratory side so that any moisture that does make its way back to that inspiratory side of the vent before it gets to the inspiratory valve, I want it to be repelled. I don't want it to make its way back into my ventilator. So that's why I'm going to use a hydrophobic filter on that side of the ventilator. Now that's when we're protecting the patient. Now, Step two is, is understanding that all of this air that goes into the patient will then come out of the patient. It will come back through the expiratory valve, back to the ventilator, and it is ultimately released back into the environment. So think about that. What goes into your patient then comes out as waste gas, or maybe some would refer to it as as an expiratory gas or maybe even a dirty exhalation gas or we, we don't want people breathing on us right we don't we don't want to be breathing that gas that the patient is exhaling because they are sick and and we don't want to get sick so we have to also think about protecting ourselves 
And when I say ourselves, I'm not talking about just RTs. I'm also talking about the nursing staff. I'm also talking about the physicians. I'm also talking about the environmental services staff and all of the family and friends that are in the room as well. We don't want this patient here who is sick to put gas back out into the environment to then lead us to a state of susceptibility to becoming sick. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, the ventilators have HEPA filters. And if you work in a large uh, medical center or a large hospital, then yeah, most of your uh, microprocessor ventilators have built-in high-efficiency HEPA filters, but not all vents. Take this one, for example. There's no HEPA filter in this ventilator. This gas goes into the patient and then returns from the patient and then is exhausted right here. Now I'm standing at this vent looking at it and the exhaust is right here. Obviously I want to filter that. So again, I'm gonna have a filter on the expiratory side so that all of the gas that comes from the patient is filtered before it comes back out into the environment. Now, before we talk about the last element I wanna talk about, we're, we're, we're talking about humidified gas here with the humidifier. What we have to understand is that we don't always use uh, heated circuits with the humidifier. Sometimes we use an HME, which is a heat moisture exchanger. And so for this patient, what I would do is say, okay, well, let me use an effective HME. So again, this is a Paul HME hydrophobic filter, and I'm going to put it onto my circuit as close to the patient as possible. When the patient inhales, gas is filtered. When they exhale, that heated and humidified gas, which is the way gas comes out of our body, is captured in this HME. The next breath comes through, that heat and that, that moisture is picked up and delivered to the patient. Now, if you're utilizing an HME during times of aerosolized medications, you have to first of all understand that your nebulizer needs to be past your HME, closer to your patient. You wouldn't want to put it back here because all of your drug is going to be absorbed and, and filtered out before it ever gets to your patient. But the interesting thing about this filter is, is that when the patient exhales, that nebulized medication, those aerosolized medications get pushed into the filter. The next breath actually shows that it can pick those, those, those medication particles up and help to increase deposition for your patient. So we understand that if we're not using a humidifier, then an HME is going to be preferred. This HME here will help to provide that heat and humidity for your patient as well as filter all inspiratory and expiratory gas, as well as aid in drug deposition if being utilized or needed. Now, we're talking about the HME and I brought up this idea of, of aerosolized drugs. And so that brings me to my third point of this video that I wanna leave you with. You know, hospitals all over this country have million dollar investments in their equipment into their mechanical ventilators and it makes sense that especially you know these vents that are high microprocessing ventilators they're basically a big computer when we think about that we know that computers don't like moisture so again back to the moisture conversation doesn't it make sense that we would want the gas to go into our patient it needs to be heated and humidified whether that's with a humidifier or an HME, but then we want that gas to come back, but when it gets back to the vent, we want it to be dry. We don't want any of that moisture to make its, make its way back into our ventilators. And that's to increase the longevity and the continued functioning of our equipment investment. And these ventilators don't like moisture. So it makes sense that if you could choose between an electrostatic filter that, again, susceptible to becoming saturated, allowing, allowing liquid and liquid pathogens through it that then could get back into the vent, it makes sense that a hydrophobic filter may lead to better performance and increase the longevity of your equipment. Now, we were talking about aerosolized medications. Same conversation. What we know about mechanical ventilators and the use of valves, inspiratory valves and expiratory valves is simply this. Drugs and inspiratory and expiratory valves don't mix well together. 
So the last thing we want to do is to be aerosolizing a medication in within this circuit that that aerosolized medication is making its way back to and inside of our ventilator. The question is, is okay, so I have a HEPA filter. Fantastic. So we're safe. We are. But where is the expiratory valve in relationship to that HEPA filter? If that exhalation valve is between the patient and the HEPA filter, then all of that aerosolized medication is coming back to and depositing on that expiratory valve, which is going to interrupt and impair the functionality of your ventilator. So we have to, we have to become more conscious on, on protecting not just our patient, just our staff, but also our equipment so that it is uh, around for a long time and functioning at a high level for a long time. Now, kind of quick summary here. Why is filtration important? Well, because it affects more than just one person. We know that the patient is always the key focus of our care and we obviously want to protect the patient. So adequate filtration to protect the patient from unnecessary exposure to, to pathogens makes sense. But don't forget to protect yourself. Don't forget about the other care workers or healthcare workers that are coming into that room, the nurses, the physicians, again, environmental services, family and friends. We need the expiratory side to be filtered as well so that we can stay healthy and ready, prepared to take care of our patients. And then the last thing is, is if you're gonna spend millions of dollars on some equipment, it makes sense that we'd wanna take care of it. So remember that all of the moisture that needs to be inside of this circuit for the creation of the optimal mucociliary escalator environment, perfect, makes perfect sense. But we don't want that moisture to get back to our ventilator. We don't want aerosolized drugs to get back to and within our ventilator because it causes problems. So you go out there and you buy a $55,000, $60,000 ventilator Ask yourself, which filter is going to extend the longevity and the lifespan of that equipment that we just spent a lot of money on? That's filtration. That's why it's important. This is the Paul filter. This is where you can find me. Instagram, at Respiratory Coach. TikTok, at Respiratory Coach. Come find me over on LinkedIn, at Joe Lewis. We're having a lot of good conversations happening on LinkedIn. If you're not there, be sure and come visit us. And then respiratorycoach at gmail.com is uh, where you can always send me an email. Send me a text to 817-968-7035. I would love to engage with you uh, beyond just here on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok, but occasionally send you uh, messages, inspirational, motivational, educational, just to enhance your uh, journey through this world as a respiratory therapist. Remember, at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.